Hey, Travis with T-Customs Productions, T-Customs.com. Today's video is on five ways you can incorporate a drum break into your hip hop production, really to any production that you're working on, whether it be R&B, pop, EDM, anything. I'm gonna be focusing primarily on hip hop beats because that's the style of production that I typically create. And I'm gonna be showing you the direct application into some current sessions that I'm working on as well as some previous sessions. So hopefully you can take something away, whether you are a beginner, intermediate, or even some advanced beat makers or producers can take at least a tip away from this. I'm also gonna provide a free download in the description below this video somewhere where you can download the actual breaks that I'm gonna be using for this demonstration. There will also be a few other free drum breaks for you to download if you don't already have any yourself, or if you do, you can feel free to apply these same techniques to whatever breaks you have yourself. You can dig these in vinyl, various records, you can find loop packs out there. There's a lot of different ways that you can acquire various drum breaks and percussion loops and things like that. But I will provide that sample pack over my blog, so there should be a link below where you can go over there. There's also some other free resources and things you can feel free to check out. Drum breaks can be found basically on a lot of recorded records. Uh, if you're a drummer, you can kind of record your own breaks and be able to chop and re-manipulate them find them at the beginning into records, maybe even somewhere in the middle where there's like kind of a drummer breakdown or things like that. And they were traditionally taken and just looped up as is and producers started, you know, layering their own samples and instruments on top. And then over time, finding different techniques to take a live drums, if they don't play drums themselves, take a live drum break to help emulate a groove or to just take the, the raw samples and really give authenticity to the type of beast that they're working on. So I got a session right now open of a track that I'm currently working on. And so the first technique I want to talk about with this session open is using the loop as is. And this might seem the most straightforward way. You've got four bars or eight bars of a drum break. Okay, I can kind of loop this up. If I need to do some time stretching or some other type of massaging or manipulation, I can do that to get it to work with the tempo of my beat. But that's pretty much the most straightforward way to use a break. So for instance, for this particular beat, I'm using this break. And again, that would be included in that free download. And then I built, you know, piano and, and different elements on top of that. And so this is essentially what the original break sounds like. And so when I was creating this beat, I actually wanted something, I would say mid tempo or somewhere in the mid 80s BPM range. This drum loop as is without any kind of manipulation is right at about 79 BPM. There's different ways that you can take a drum loop and kind of shift it if needed to get it closer to what you're working on. You can obviously transpose it. I've talked about before, shifting up will make the track faster, but it will also change the pitch. Sometimes I will use a transpose for drums, but in this case, I didn't want to change the pitch of the kick and snare and hats. I just wanted to make it a little bit faster. And so what I did in Ableton, you can do this in whatever software you're working on, is I enabled some sort of a time stretch. The way that I work usually is I want my primary kick and snare notes to align somewhat on the grid. Obviously one of the benefits to using a break in many cases is that you get kind of a loose sound, you get a live feel, but I wanna make sure that it's at least somewhat synced up with the BPM of the track that I'm creating. In Ableton, basically all I'm doing is I'm creating stretch points or markers and kind of time stretching and shifting my, my main hits on the grid. And so after I did that, this is what this loop with just simple time stretching sounds like with the, the actual beat. Okay, so that's not bad. That's kind of the groove and feel that I'm looking for for this beat. All I've basically done at this point is time stretched it a little bit. I haven't at this point layered anything or done any additional processing to the break. Little subtle things, but I haven't done anything extra as far as compression or layering or done any filtering or EQing or anything like that. It's just basically the break time stretched. So that's the first technique, using the drum break or the loop as is with just some minor manipulation, time stretching or transposing. I am going to revisit this session here in just just a minute when we get into step three because I'm going to show you the additional processing that I did to this break and how I further manipulated the drums. Okay, so I've got a new session open now and I'm going to talk about the second technique and that is to actually chop up and rearrange 
your drum break. So you may like the drum sounds in the break, but you may want to reprogram it. You may want a different swing or a different groove to your hats or the way that the ghost kick comes in. After the first bar or so, this really just repeats over and over. And so these are basically my chop points. This is what I have chopped this break up into. So you really just want all the unique hits in this, whatever particular one hits that you're looking for, individual kicks, the snares, the hats, the ghost notes and rolls and things like that. So these yellow markers basically represent my chop points and depending on what DAW you're using, there's different ways to chop up. So if you're using Ableton, you can use this method and I've covered how to chop samples in past videos. I'll make sure to link that particular video in the description. So I chopped that break into MIDI and if you want to still work in audio, you can chop and rearrange it in audio as well. Sometimes I'll work both ways, but this case, I went ahead and chopped it in MIDI and so now I have all the individual hits and I can trigger them, reprogram them however I want. So that sounds okay and the, the groove and feel is kind of what I'm looking for, but I also want to enhance the drum hits as they are. I want to do something extra. And so my third technique, and this is one that I do quite often, and it's one of the easiest, most straightforward ways to really beef up, get bigger drum sounds is to simply layer. So what I've done is I have layered additional kicks and snares underneath or over top, however you want to look at it, of these one hits from the drum break to supplement the sound. Sometimes from breaks, you may not always get super low end. You may not always get in a sub range that you might want from a kick. So you may want to layer an 808 or may want to layer a series of snares that are going to help complement that. You may want the vinyl grit from that break, but then you may also want a clap layered or a rim shot or some other elements to help build a bigger sound than just what you're getting from the break. And so what I've done is I found some other sounds. You can take these from separate drum breaks, or you may have some various kick and snare sample packs, or maybe some go-to sounds that you want to incorporate to really give yourself an extra punch or snap, a bigger sound. And so I've pulled some drum samples from some of my various drum sample packs, volume two, three, and four, kind of layered underneath to help enhance what I have already programmed from the break. So next what I've done is I've created two separate tracks. Now you could do all this in the same MIDI drum track here if you wanted to, if you just wanted to add some extra sounds. But I like to have separate tracks. It's just easier for me to check the levels. If I want to make this kick a little more prominent or this snare a little more pushed back than having everything grouped together. And so I just chose to create two separate MIDI tracks. One has a kick in it, as you can see here. This is a kick from one of my drum sample packs. Um, and this snare is from one of my drum sample packs as well. What I did to layer these sounds is I just copied the MIDI information when I programmed the initial break. And now I can just apply that to the additional sounds that I've layered. You can also use a frequency analyzer to give yourself a visual representation of what your current drum tracks sound like. You know, if you're looking to add a kick that has a lot of really good 60 hertz range or a certain frequency range that will complement your drums from the break, you can use that. And so you could solo out your kick and look and see, okay, you know, this is hitting in this particular range here. That may give you some visual guidance into what maybe your current track is lacking and some ideas for what you might want to supplement it with. I try to use my ears as much as possible, but it's also good just to have a separate reference, a visual reference for that. If you are struggling to find drum sounds, they're going to complement what you already have in place. And another thing to mention is you wanna make sure that when you do start layering, whether it be audio with MIDI or MIDI with MIDI, that your drums are actually aligning together because if you get two kicks that are hitting down pretty close, but they're not hitting together, it can cause some really weird sounds and you may be trying to layer to get a bigger sound, but if they're not synced up, you may be doing the opposite. However you're programming your drums, just make sure that the kicks are hitting together, the snares are hitting together. That can help prevent a lot of issues. Uh, so now I'm back to the first session that we touched on and I want to kind of piggyback on the last technique that I talked about as far as layering additional drums to either your drum break in audio format or if you've chopped it up in MIDI. I mentioned before that I had actually done more than just looped up this break and had done some additional processing and that is to apply some sort of filtering or EQing to number one you can use a high pass filter to essentially extract a hi-hat pattern. Uh, so for instance if I solo on this uh, track right here. I see this high pass filter that I have. If I disable this and play this back,
and then enable a high pass filter. And the higher you go on this, the more of the, the lows and mids you're gonna obviously filter out. So you get more of that, that high register, that high frequency range, which in most cases is gonna be your hi-hats, maybe the top end of your snares. So one of my prominent techniques for using a break, I'll filter out a lot of the mid and low and use the hi-hats from that pattern and then reprogram my own drums. So I had multiple steps to finalizing this particular drum track and I still may do some changes to it later. But the first step was to put kind of a mid-range cutoff on this filter. So as you can see, 541 Hertz. Like I showed in the previous session, I went ahead and also layered, once I had that filter that cut off applied, I wanted to obviously add my own drums. Uh, I've got one kick sample from, I believe, my drum sample pack volume two. I also then layered a series of claps and snares for my drum sample pack volume four. So one other step that I took for this track and kind of adding on to all of what I've shown so far is I duplicated the break track. And you'll see with this one that I put a super high threshold. It's like a 6K cutoff. So you're just getting that top end. I did a little bit of widening. And so this is really just amplifying the stereo sound. I'm taking a lot of those super highs and just kind of spreading them out in the left and right channel. Because it's a separate track, I now have an independent volume control. And so that's another thing that you can do and you can really get into and be ninja with processing your drum breaks is having multiple layers. You may have one break that you've rolled off a lot of the high frequencies and you're only focused on that low or that kick drum. And so you can process that separately from say the mids or where your snare frequencies lay and then have a separate track for highs or mid highs or however you want to do it. You can also use different plugins that use kind of like side processing. And so if you just want to enhance what's different on the left and right channel, there's a lot of different techniques that you can apply that kind of go outside the scope of this particular video. But this was one other layer that I added. And then the way that all that sounds together. Okay, so the last technique that I wanna to touch on for incorporating a drum break into your production is to actually extract a groove from a break or to convert your audio into a MIDI track. Now, you may not have this capability depending on what DAW you're using. If you don't have that capability, another thing that you can do is kind of a manual way to do it is kind of eyeball it. You'd have your audio break here, have a MIDI track below it, zoom in and click in your MIDI notes as you can kind of see here and you could test it out and then maybe save the MIDI track for later. But in Ableton, it's very simple to do. I'll just show you both of these methods really quickly. First off, to extract a groove, I wanna extract the groove from this audio file, this drum break. In Ableton, right click at the top and uh, extract groove. What Ableton will do is create a groove in your groove pool. So I extracted all that MIDI information, essentially that groove from that break. So now that I have this groove, I could very easily apply that to any kind of MIDI track. Let's say my kick track, in this case, my kick track has already been shifted. If I zoom in, it's not, everything is not exactly on the grid, but if it were, if it was just a track that I had clicked in, I could very easily just drag over this groove over to this track and it'll say right here that the break one groove has been applied. So that'll allow my additional drums to fit the pocket of that break. And then you can also uh, right click on the audio and convert drums to new MIDI track. And I have a video where I show exactly how to do that in more detail as well. And so now this is basically what Ableton's done is taken all that audio information, turned it into MIDI and then put its own stock drums, detecting the transients, doing its best to convert that into MIDI information. So it's not always perfect. You will have to play around with an experiment, but that is another really easy way to extract the feel and groove and then very easily substitute in your own drums. Just kind of as a bonus, just some other things that you may want to think about, some additional uh, enhancements you can add to your breaks, whether they're in, again, an audio or MIDI is subtle panning. Feel free to use whatever plugins you have. I'm just using the stock plugins in Ableton. 
have that bounce around the left and right channel so you can experiment with panning. Additional processing, obviously parallel compression is another big component to just getting your drums to pop in addition to layering. You know, more in-depth EQ, like I've mentioned before, as far as separating your tracks, having different frequency ranges or different bands, and you can apply different effects and really come up with some great sounding drum tracks. So anyway, those are my tips. Those are my five tips with the extra couple thrown in that I personally apply. So there's other techniques that you may use. If you have any that you want to share that I missed, feel free to drop those in the comments. All of the drum samples, the kicks and snares that I'm using in my drum sample packs, the links will be in the description. This video was helpful. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. Browse the other videos on the channel for more production tips, beat making videos, instrumentals, sound kits, the list goes on and on. Again, hopefully this did help out in some way, even if you just extracted one little tip from it. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.